Hi everyone, welcome back to a tactics video, this time looking at all the indirect or artillery unit options for Ash Militarum. We just had a balanced data slate come out, uh, which changed a couple of key things which will affect this video. Um, and I've had a lot of thinking about Ash Militarum indirect unit options in a lot of, lot of games I've played recently. So let's get straight into it and look at some assumed knowledge for this video. Okay, the first thing to remember always is obviously the detachment rule for Ash Militarum being born soldiers. We've only got one given we're still an index army in 10th edition of 40k. As you know, if we basically stay still, we've got lethal hits where sixes to hit become automatic wounds and it only applies in your um, turn. The key thing being end of the turn, so it doesn't work in your opponent's uh, turn. Now this basically lends into a lot of thinking that everyone can probably appreciate is that if uh, you remain stationary, there's a bonus to your damage output. So what remains stationary most of the time is indirect fire units. Uh, what this means for the rest of your army is basically you're going to be potentially ignoring this for most of the game. So an infantry squad moving, a lemon rust tank moving, a regal dawn moving, some casualties moving, they don't get the benefit of this. Obviously indirect units which stay still most of the game will benefit from that. That's a key point starting there. Okay next is then um, orders and this is a crucial part for Ashton Militarum and the way it currently works in 10th edition is these orders can be given to both squadron or regimental uh, regiment uh, keyword units, which we'll look at in a moment. Lord Solar is an exception, he can give um, orders to everyone, but for the sake of this video, we're looking at those two unit types. So the key one here, um, obviously, is um, take aim, where you're improving the ballistic skill of that unit by plus one. So the key thing here is ballistic skill characteristic. It's not plus one to hit, it's ballistic skill. And I'm gonna build it to my main point in a moment. Okay, what next have I got for assumed knowledge? Oh, is the Scout Sentinel. Now, this vehicle comes in at 60 points, and you can see it's got a pretty decent um, set of statistics. Uh, T7, moves 10, 3 plus save, 7 wounds, OC2. So it's enough wounds for 60 points to annoy your opponent, and given it's quite, got quite a big base, um, they've got bigger with the new models, they are, can do a lot of good movement blocking. Uh, the DACA is all pretty much academic, but the key thing for the sake of this video, again, is this ability here, Daring Recon. Uh, where they can choose it within 18 inches um, and all Astromilla time friendly units get to reroll once to hit and ignores the indirect fire penalty. So this for me is a huge thing uh, which is really sort of baffling for Astromilla time in 10th edition is that broadly speaking 10th edition has gone through an evolution where they launched the new edition and they basically discovered that the way they've written their rules for indirect fire was just suffocating a lot of play and it was, wasn't fun to play because you're just getting you know hammered without being able to do anything because you can't interact. Now this ability here, and this is the key part which we need to sort of focus on, is that given, as we'll look in a moment, we've got a lot of units that have got blizzard skill of 4+, plus. they can increase the blizzard skill to 3+, plus. then got the heavy keyword, which means if you remain stationary, you're hitting on 2s, and if you use a uh, Scout Sentinel Spotter, you're hitting on 2s now. So this, this for me is a bit of, this is what's quite challenging to think through, is that we're massively incentivized to play indirect fire units because you can actually make um, a Basilisk, a Manticore, um, a Praetor Launcher, etc. We'll look at in a moment, more accurate than any direct fire weapon platforms we've got across the rest of the Codex or Index. Okay, remove Kazrakans, remove infantry, focus on vehicles. Indirect fire vehicles can be made the most accurate in the entire Index. So that for me is really where the challenge lies, is that, you know, if you lean fully back into indirect fire, you can have a very, very accurate army. Uh, granted, you can only take you know three units of three scout sentinels, and if they all die eventually, you're then going back to hit on threes. But fundamentally, you can have a very, very accurate um, set of units hitting very effectively on two. So this, I think, is really where I'm kind of stuck with guard, is the fact that our core, you know, everything leans into that. So as I said, if you remain stationary, you've got lethal hits, okay, that can work on anything, but... Indirect units always stay still all game, typically, so they're going to get six as a lethal hits. You can get them down to be hitting on uh, fours or threes, and then given they've all got the heavy keyword, and then the Scout Sentinel makes them ignore that penalty, you're hitting on twos. So, you know, we'll look, look at the points in a moment, but they haven't fixed this for guard. Uh, so th this is someone I struggle with, as you know. You go after artillery, with some Scout Sentinels, be a very effective army as far as destroying your opponent, or do you go into other builds and focus more on mission play, which I'll kind of discuss a little bit throughout this. 
Okay, other things to look at from a assumed knowledge point of view um, is it another way to buff artillery is to take some regimental attaches. I think they're 40 points for the three uh, individuals, not characters, which is a good thing because uh, it could give away assassinate because they're very squishy. And the artillery commander, which is an old metal miniature, uh, basically units, uh, targets within 30 inches, um, selecting one, um, uh, basically it gets a sustained hit one from Ashmiller time artillery. So, you know, th this is probably more of a, a niche side use. Uh, I do know the Astropath uh, basically turns off Deep Strike within 12 inches, and this does pop up every now and again. Uh, 40 points onto a command squad, and you've got basically Deep Strike Denial, plus if he pokes his nose around a corner, can see a target within 30 inches, you've got sustained hits as well uh, coming in over the top from your artillery uh, strikes. Okay, last thing from the assumed knowledge point of view um, is in the stratagem. So uh, reinforcements, as you all know, uh, pay two CP, bring back regimental units, and that will apply to some of the stuff we look at. Suppression fire is actually quite good uh, in the sense uh, astronomical time infantry units. Uh, any hits made onto non-monster or vehicles, uh, you minus one from the hit roll for that unit, and that can be quite good into potentially some other targets. Now, Fields of Fire, of course, is one to always remember. Uh, regimental or squadron units um, shoot into another target, and then everything else that shoots into it after, regimental or squadron, gets additional AP. Then also got Expert Bombardiers for one command point, uh, basically a Voxcast equipped unit, so you're going to be your Battle Line units, your Kazakans, or your um, Tempestus Scions. Uh, they can basically get plus one to hit roll, so that probably could be used a bit uh, less so, uh, in the sense you can't basically do heavy keyword plus one and then this plus one on top, because that's probably going against one of the key rules, if I think, if I've got it right. Uh, but there are some options here. So, Expert Bombardier supports artillery. Uh, fields of Fire can also boost artillery. Regimental or reinforcements can bring back some stuff, and Suppression Fire uh, is also useful as well. So. I think that's that's a key point I want to make in the first seven odd minutes of this video is that still Astra Militarm does feel like an army that wants to take artillery. Um, and by no means does it mean it's going to be a winning army, um, as per we'll probably talk about a little bit in a moment. So on to the units. Okay, if I get into my spreadsheet. Okay, so what I've done is I've listed out all of the Astra Militarm artillery units only with the indirect fire keyword, and there's one to talk about quite quickly. Um, and you can see what I've done is I've put the uh, points, um, the key stuff like movement, um, toughness, save, wounds, uh, leadership, and OC, and then their weapon, uh, main weapon profile, keywords, or abilities, etc., etc. So we'll go through these one at a time. Okay, and uh, the one to sort of talk about quickly before we move on, away from this is actually the Imperial Bombard, or I think it's also referred to as a Colossus Bombard. I'm not including in this video because this model, this unit does not have the indirect fire keyword, which is baffling. Uh, so its profile itself is, is interesting, can do dev wounds. I think it's uh, D6 plus one shots, I think it is. Um, it looks radical, and but it's made of resin, so it's costing you 88 pounds, which is an absolute joke. Um, but it's, it's a bit baffling that they don't actually um, have this as an indirect fire unit. I can't find it on my profile on the, on the phone, but I'm not including this because it is an indirect fire weapon, which is just baffling. So let's take that one out. Okay, so back onto this. Let's start off. It's going alphabetical, and I've sort of married up the, the forge rod equivalents um, alongside. So the Basilisk, 135 points. Didn't see a point increase or point change in the latest um, index or balanced data set, rather. Uh, moving 10, 9 uh, toughness, 3 plus save, 11 wounds, blah, blah, blah. Earthshaker carriage battery, uh, correction, uh, the Earthshaker cannon, 240 inch range, shoots wherever it wants, D6 plus 3 shots, hitting on 4s, 8, 2, and 2. Of course, blast and hit. So as said, uh, you can theoretically cut this down to hitting on 2s, because you improve the blizzard skill, and you get plus 1 to hit from the heavy keyword, but given it's indirect, it's cancelled hitting on 3s, which is still pretty decent. Um, now, this little conversation for the Basilisk should always be made with the Urshay Carriage Battery uh, considered alongside it. Now, this is a Forge World kit. Um, that's, that's problem number one. It's very expensive. Um, and at 15 points cheaper, uh, you can see basically you lose movement, you lose toughness, you lose a save, you lose wounds, and you lose a point of OC. But you keep the same weapon, 
uh, with the critical element being, of course, the Blissett score goes down to 5+. plus. Now, if we get onto keywords, this is where we should think about this a bit more. So obviously, Basilisk is a vehicle. Ursho Carriage Battery is infantry. One is squadron, one is regiment. They're both artillery. Yeah, so squadron means only tank commanders or Lord Solar can order it. Um, you're going to have probably less tank commanders than you would have from an inch infantry officer point of view. You could have platoon command squad, caddy command squad, caddy and castellan, Asala Creed, um, Colonel Iron Strachan, and there's several other infantry officers you can have. So that potentially is one is one thing to consider as a benefit for the Usher Cash Battery is you're going to struggle to probably struggle less to give it orders, given uh, vehicles you're going to have maybe like two or three tank commanders at best uh, to, uh, to order a basilisk. Well, one thing I've come up actually in a couple of games recently is that actually, whilst the Basilisk is more expensive 15 points, it does give away a bringer down, being in vehicle compared to a bunch of squishy dudes who can move four inches, EP, uh, with only six wounds. Um, but actually, it's probably better to take a Basilisk because if you get tagged in melee, which the worst case can happen, um, the Osho carriage battery can't fire out of melee. It's actually stuck because it's infantry. Um, so that I think is actually, you know, for 15 points less, the Osho carriage battery, I don't know, really stacks up anymore. Before the previous balance data, say like back when 10th edition first launched, I think these were like something comical, like 80 points, which is just wrong, which was just wrong, but was awesome. And that made them like an auto include because they're so cheap. But now we're a 15 point difference only. I don't think it's enough to sort of justify taking the Osho carriage battery. Now, if we then go to, I've written a couple of key points, and one thing I, I must, before I forget, is that both of these, against infantry targets, or non-vehicle or monster, I think it is, are minus two to move, advance, and charge. So that, that is a huge way to control the game, is that particularly in the early start stages of the game, if your opponent's got no um, infiltrate units, and they have to basically get an infantry unit or a battle line unit or whatever it is onto a forward objective and they haven't deployed close enough to the line or if they're a slow moving unit like a bunch of terminators and they have to advance them you've taken out four inches of their movement and that that's critical into some slow moving stuff um, and even then as the game progresses you can control advances you can control charges so i think this this is super strong uh, super duper strong and i think um we, we shouldn't forget this and it's definitely Something you should always keep in the back of your mind because I know definitely as I've matured into 40k by no means I'm a good player I'm learning to use this a lot more because it can really sort of you know mess with your opponent um, Now as I said, you know um, This versus that I think the bass list overall is better uh, Because as I said, it's only 15 points more expensive. It's a vehicle that's tough I can shoot at a melee and then being a vehicle it can actually do stuff. Yeah, so it can move 10 and at the, at the back end of the game, if you've lost loads of units, you know, you're playing the attrition game, running out of infantry squads and sentinels and chimeras, an extra six inch movement to jump on an objective, to use a flamer or heavy bolter, to fire a hunter killer missile, uh, to actually do it, to use tank shock strategy in melee, it is definitely probably worth it, I think, you know, as opposed to saving 15 points. Um, I went and bought three of them from uh, Forgery World in China, I got them quite cheap. Um, and I'm lucky I did because you know they've probably fallen out of favor with me personally um, So of the two the basilisk definitely is the way to go now. Let's before we jump ahead Let's then examine the key profile uh, I've looked at the minus two to move which I think is so good uh, But d6 plus three shots blasts means you're always going to get out, you know on average six or you know seven eight into blast targets uh, Strength eight means you're going to be wounding all infantry um, up to heavy infantry like Primaris Space Marines, who are now Toughness 6, at least on 3s. AP 2, okay, decent, uh, pretty decent. And then Damage 2 means you're going to plink, you know, you're going to do some work. Even if they've got Feel No Pains, they're still going to annoy them. Um, so, yeah, I think, as I said, the Basilisk better than the Ocean Carriage Battery. And as we'll look at in a bit later in the video, this is probably the one of the key sort of uh, key contenders out of all of these. Uh, now, let's make sure I've not forgotten any of my notes. Um, no. Oh, one thing to say for the Osho Carriage Battery is it's a big model. That's good and bad. If you want to uh, screen out the back of the board, given it's such a big, long thing with the, like its rear sort of trailer thing opened all the way up, it's got a massive footprint, which can help to screen out the back of the board. 
but then also it means when you're trying to hiding it from your opponent behind cover it's harder to hide uh, given the basilisk which is somewhat more of a neater sort of you know block albeit it's quite a long block with the, the the thing on the back where the crew are okay so hopefully you agree the basilisk is superior to your show catch battery if the point difference was like 35 points definitely a very com different conversation but at 15 points don't think so Okay, we can move through the next two pretty quickly, unfortunately. The, you know, the Death Strike, it's not even worth talking about. You know, it's a vehicle under 60 points. Uh, it's got this comical profile. I can fire basically once per game. Uh, it's, got the, it's got a toughness 10, you know, 11 wounds, etc., etc. So it is pretty resilient. Um, but the range you can fire wherever it wants and the way it basically works. You've got to mark a target in one turn and then the missile fires the next target. Now... That's cool. Um, these were great in 9th edition at some point. Uh, actually, when the Codex came out, we had a Codex for like seven months, lucky guard players. Um, but this profile fundamentally is just garbage now, unfortunately. So 2d6 shots, and every unit within six inches of that uh, marker um, has to basically be hit. And, you know, it, it depends. You know, if you go into a matchup where you've got like lo a massive horde army and there's units everywhere and you put in the middle and you turn two, they can't expand out enough and suddenly you're, you're blasting like three or four units getting touched by this thing. Could work, but that's very situational. And probably could work if you're playing casual games into your mate who's got a horde army. Um, you know, 2d6 shots each target. Hitting on twos, you've got the heavy keyword, I think, as well. I've forgotten to put that in there. Strength 16, AP 4, but the, the killer here is one damage. Um, it's just, you know, if this was two damage, mwah, be amazing. AP minus 4 is serious. It's ser very serious. I don't think we've got no other artillery, which is minus 4, so that, that would be great because that means it's saving its AP 3 against um, it from indirect, and that means even Terminators are saving on 5s, which is or custodian saving on fires. If this was dev wounds, etc., that could make it quite spicy, but 16 for one with the one killing it, it's only one shot. Um, and yeah, I mean, my comments here, right? It's a rule of cool, it looks cool. It's got a terrible one shot profile. So 160 points, this is almost just like, I might start marking this so I don't forget what I'm saying, but like, you know, this unfortunately is just turd. Um, and it was great for, you know, as I said, seven months of, of um, of uh, ninth edition, and I, I built one, I painted, painted one, and then we went into 10th edition, so lucky Jeff, no chance to use it. But that's just how it is. It'll be probably good in again in like maybe 12th edition or 13th edition, will be good again. Um, okay, so it's an E1. All right, field ordnance battery, 120 points uh, for two bases here. Um, and what I've basically done is, again, it's an infantry thing, like the Ocho Couch battery moves for toughness five, four plus save, six wounds each, or 12 wounds for two. Um, and two OC each, uh, or four in total. Now, the indirect weapon, of course, you can take a LAS cannon, um, the rocket thing, which weirdly isn't indirect, or the bombast field gun, which is basically an artillery piece, is D6 shots each, so two by D6. Hitting on fives at seven, one, two, blast, and the heavy keyword. So basically, you can see that. It matches the Osho carriage battery being an infantry operated piece of artillery. So fair, so that means you're hitting on threes with an order because you've got heavy and then you've got uh, take aim. Okay, but then of course it's indirect back to hitting on fours unless you've got a scout sent on to spot it. Okay, let's before we comment on this part here, talk about the uh, ability. So if it remains stationary and received an order, you get sustained hits one. Okay, so that's... To be considered, that means, you know, if we're firing to a blast keyword target and you got, you know, 2d6 shots, you're going to be getting, let's just say, 6 on average, you're going to get 8, maybe 10 if it's a like a big blob. Um, so that means probably you're going to land what 2 shots are going to be sustained and the rest will, you know. So you're probably going to get, I don't know, we sustained 6 shots maybe hitting the target, given hitting on 4s. Um, but where this sort of falls down is a 712. So AP1 in 10th edition typically means AP none because obviously indirect, uh, you minus the AP. And even then, like the way the game is set up with the current terrain rules is that most units, most of the time will have an element of cover, particularly vehicles. Um, they're always gonna have an element of cover. So AP1 is AP none. Um, of course, you could boost it by putting something else into the target with fields of five for the additional AP. So you suddenly got AP2. But organic AP1, it's just, it's not there. Um, now, I think 
you know, 712 is actually all right. It's only a point behind the uh, the Basilisk at 822. Um, but, you know, you're still hitting it. You're still going to be winding all heavy infantry and all infantry on threes at minimum. Um, uh, but AP1, as I said, is AP none. And I don't know, like 120 points. Um, one thing that's a shame is this looks such, it's such a good model. Like the crew looks so rad. Dude's loading it. You know, the commander guy giving the order to fire or adjust to fire or whatever. And they've got the guys firing it. So it's a fantastic looking diorama piece. But it's such a big model. It's a, the huge models and they're only OC2. Um, now, okay, the Urshay carriage battery is also OC2. Um, but I would probably say you can fit one of those much easier than you can fit two of these. They're fundamentally massive models. Uh, they have to be within coherence, within two inches, fine. That means you've got a massive footprint. And then, you know, indirect weapons or uh, units for us typically are holding your home objectives. And again, if the game falls apart and your opponent gets onto your objective, home objective, this thing could be so big it actually blocks out the entire objective, um, which means you've only got potentially OC, you know, four maybe holding it. And they could squeeze on enough OC to get it. So it's it's a bit it's very situational that that consideration. But it's to be considered such a big model, a low OC count, that's not good. And then you know two D six four seven one two. I mean if this was eight two two, basically a basilisk, it, it might be good. Um, you know okay, it's got the regiment keyword like the Oshay carriage battery does, which actually means you could bring it back alive while the reinforcement stratagem, but if you're losing your artillery, you're not in a good place. The game is not in a good place if you're losing artillery, and you should be reinforced using the reinforcement strat on Kazrakan, Scions, or just plain infantry squads, um, or battle line units like Death Corps or, or Cadian. Um, so I don't know. I mean, yeah, yeah I have a huge base, OC2 top and profile. Okay. So... You know, I, I think that's a, as I said, it's a, it's a real shame because it's a fantastic looking model and I genuinely wish it was good so I could paint the, the tool I've got in my, my cupboard for the last year now. Um, uh, but it's just not there. Okay, back on, oh, moving on to something a bit more positive is the heavy weapon squad and this of course is the mortars. So you get three bases, 60 points. Uh, they're basically infantry dudes. Uh, they've got two wounds each, and they're the, the good old squishiness that we know and love, being Astromilitarm riflemen or guardsmen. Um, now, in comparison, these little tiny bases, you know, like, uh, I think, uh, are they 40 mil bases? I think they're quite small, aren't they? OC2 for two of, for one of those. You've got three, that's obviously six, versus OC2 for a monstrosity of a base. Um, so already getting a lot of efficiency there. Um, now, 48 inch range for the mortars, you get three of course as one each. Again, the same as the Basilisk, O'Shea Coach Battery at four Nauts, hitting on fives, which means hitting on threes, at five, zero, one, a blast. Heavy keyword, of course, and their interesting ability is they can overwatch from five plus. Never personally use it, but could come up. And if you're within six inches of a platoon friendly unit, you are hitting on fours on overwatch. So that's pretty good. That's actually situation. I need to remember that because that's actually quite good, actually. Because you know you could have opponent dropping some deep strike, really close to you. You don't want to have to deal with it, and you could overwatch on four plus. So pretty good. Now it's just I giggle looking at this because heavy weapon squad with mortars was decent in ninth edition. It was always good. I think it meant maybe in eighth edition it was good, but here we are again, and actually it's pretty good. I mean. 60 points, three bases, OC6 means you can hold your home objective nice and safe, it's still more. Obviously they're regimental keyword units, which they can receive the auto duty and honor. Uh, so you could boost them to OC9 if things get really sort of, you know, a bit wobbly towards back end of the game. And then, you know, okay, 501, you could look at this and go, Ugh, you know, you're gonna, against heavy infantry, prim primary space marines, um, also I think custodies, I think it is also as well, you're wounding on fives. But against all medium and light infantry, you're going to be winning on threes, you know, at, at worst. Okay, AP zero, not great. But of course, what this is basically relying on is just volume of shots, yeah? So if you've got even a blast a blast unit of five models, you're going to be getting on average, on average, 12 shots, you know? So it's actually, it's actually decent. And, you know, th this, this comment applies to everything we looked at so far, but given these things should never move, you know, the sixes to lethal hits will give them a the bit of extra punch. And of course, not everything is serving on a three. Some units save on fours or fives, even have no no save. So, of course, matchup dependent, they could do a lot of work into, I don't know, pox walkers or croots, 
even scout space marines, um, these can do work. And of course, Aldari, given their elves on a T3, of course, they're probably going to lose their meta status because they've been nerfed pretty hard. Uh, even, you know, them, they, could, they can do work. So 60 points for three bases at OC6 with a pretty good uh, level of DACA as far as volume of shots. Heavy Weapon Squad is always going to be a favourite of mine. Um, it's almost like if you've got 60 points in your list levo left over and you've got plenty of battle line units, you're looking for someone to take, you know, is it a toss-up between a Scout Sentinel and Heavy Weapon Squad? Of course, depending list dependent, I'm actually debating this right now for a list I've got to submit tomorrow for a tournament. Um, heavy Weapon Squad probably is just, it's just versatile. Consider the back of board, secure a home objective and just annoy your opponent with heaps of reins of, you know, DACA. Okay, now onto the Manticore. So, yeah, so this is the one unit that of the entire index that received a points change in, from the balanced data set, and we went up by 30 points from 150 to 180. So, this is the second most expensive indirect unit we have now. Um, now, why we got nerfed like this, I don't know. And then, you know, if you're relatively into the meta, you follow the competitive scene. I think what basically happened is they looked at all of the best performing astronaut time players and noticed Manticores are in there and said, okay, Manticores are pretty decent. And then overall, they're trying to really peel back the indirect fire game they've created. GW credit this problem. Um, so they basically cut all indirect uh, units that were commonly used. I think even the Sisters of Battle, Adeptus Sororitas had a lot of cuts. The Whirlwind, I believe, from Space Marines had a point increase. And we've got an increase as well, which is annoying because Guard is not a, a, meta, a meta army right now. So 180 points. Uh, it's a vehicle, T10, which obviously against its uh, Basilisk Plastic uh, brother is a bit better because that obviously means against some weapons you are then uh, they are set winning you on fours. Um, uh, but uh, the meat and potatoes, the, the Storm Eagle rockets, 120 inch range, whatever they want. D6 plus one shots, which is blast. Okay, that was always a worry, that one. Um, strength 10, 2, 3. So a very, very respectable profile. It means, you know, you're going to be potentially one-shotting Adeptus Custodes, um, one-shotting any of the primary space brains that pop up now, and then probably even like Orcs and Custodes, I think I said. Uh, so three, three damage is tasty. It's tasty. And the key thing at T strength 10 is against a lot of medium vehicles like a Rhino, Space Marine Rhino, or a Cow Space Marine Rhino, that's knocking on the door on a four plus to wound. Obviously, strength eight is wounding on fives, and that is probably, that obviously is a crucial point where it just turns off your effectiveness. So yeah, strength 10 is good, it's good. Now, its ability is if you reroll against blast targets of five plus models, um, you're rolling all hits. So that's, that's good. And again, it's like, you know, this unit was it's so good. Well, it wasn't so good, but it was very good. I mean, you know, 150 points before the point increase. D6 plus one blast, so choose the right unit to shoot into, you know, okay. The worst you could roll into a blast of five is three, three shots, obviously. So D6 plus one plus the blast keyword. But given you're rerolling all hits, um, if you've boosted the variety order, hitting on threes, rolling the ones and twos, you, you can be it can be very very accurate um, now the things to consider here um, t10 strong profile with 10 to uh, 3 um, but d6 plus one shots is always risky it's always been risky um, and 180 points now there's 180 points makes it the second most expensive of everything and it makes it as expensive as a lemon rust battle tank um, I think even the actual battle tank variant or the double auto cannon variant, which is external auto cannon, which is very good. So, you know, you look how far away it is from it's the next and the, the way if you're new to Astro Miller time, the, the ones you always compare typically is a Manticore and the Basilisk. They're the ones you always compare. So a 45 point difference to its Basilisk brother really has, I think, killed this. Um, you know, I previously ran uh, three of these and two of those, and that did good work. Uh, but obviously that was 450. It's now another 90 points. I think they've really just killed the Manticore. I think, you know, there's probably still space for one of them. You know, one of them maybe in th three Basilisk, depending on which way your list is going. But yeah, they, they've, yeah, they've just squashed the Manticore, which is a shame. And 
I do always joke. I think back to like, uh, I've been playing since 8th edition. I think they were good, really good in ninth at some point, And then they were pretty decent. And then they've just gone the other way. It's like, you know. I think a key thing uh, when you play Astra Miller Time or any army really is to keep all units if you're going to stay for the long run because units will come and go. They'll be good and bad. And as I said, the Death Strike was good for one part of ninth edition. Now it's crap again. It was terrible before that. Um, but the Manticore, I think, has been thoroughly nerfed, unfortunately. Um, uh, but yeah, you know, it's a real shame because 10 2 3 is very good. Okay, next is a Forge World unit, the Medusa Carriage Battery. Uh, so basically, it's the same footprint as the Ursho Carriage Battery. It's the same key abilities, uh, key, key statistics. It's, it's a regimental unit. It's infantry moves on, it's got a 4 plus move, so it shouldn't be moving. Uh, toughness 7, 4, 6, 7, and 2. Now, Weirdly, it's got a 36 inch range, that's so quite stunted. It's a D6 blast number of shots. Uh, but where it's spicy is 10 3 3. So it's basically like a, well, it's kind of like a short ranged, less shooty manticore. Because uh, 10 3 3, that's good. Like that's, that does work. Like, you know, obviously that's AP2 uh, when you're firing indirect. But again, you're winning all heavy infantry, all infantry on threes, you know, they're giving you a saving, you know, either a four or a five, depending on the target. And the three damage does work as, as per the Manticore does. Um, now, I think the problem with this is going to be the D6 shots. I've actually used them a few times, including in tournaments, and they're just the amount of times you just roll like a one, and it's like, whoa. And if it's not a blast keyword unit, you've got obviously one shot, you're hitting on fours, it just sucks, and like, I've used them enough that they just don't do enough damage. And the key thing, again, I think in, um, I think when 10th edition launched, they were like, I think they were 80 points as well. And were they 60 points? Something just mental, like they were like so cheap. But now 110, D6 shots, hitting on fours with the order, of course. I don't know. But I think that the rest of it, basically, it's, you know, it's cheap. Okay, 110, it's cheap, strong profile. But D6 shots are super worrying. Um, you know, oh, there was other thing to say. It's a Forge World unit, just like a show carriage battery, which means you're paying, I think, 110 pounds. So, like, unless you're going from Forge World in China, you're not going to buy this model, unless you, you spoil yourself, which is cool. Um, and its ability uh, forces the unit to take Battle Shock. Now, Battle Shock is definitely a mechanic of 10th edition, which hasn't really blown the doors off. Of course, it can't. When it goes off, it can be tasty, but do remember, forcing opponent to take a battle shock test in your turn means in their command phase, they've got to take another battle shock test, and they might actually pass that battle shock test. So the only way this can actually help um, you is, again, situational play. If you're trying to take an objective off your opponent for a secondary objective, or you need to basically hold the objective to cleanse it, the, sec the secondary objective, you could turn off battle shock. Say they've got an OC unit of say 10, turn off battle shock, get two dudes on there, or one guy just to touch the objective and suddenly hold the objective. You can do the action. So it situationally could work. And also it can turn off uh, stratagem use as well. So if your opponent has taken a battle shock test, they fail, they can't use stratagems, they can't use armor of contempt, they can't use, um, I don't know, smoke screen on scout, um, uh, space marines, etc. That could work. But again, if you're newish to 40k in Astra Militarum, it's something to easily forget. And it's something you can definitely not use effectively, um, is this ability. So its ability, you know, D6 shots, um, I don't know. It's 110 points. Uh, it's got a big footprint. It is only OC2. It can be tagged a melee just like the Osho Carriage um, sibling. But yeah, it's, you know, 10 points. It's, you know, if you're shaken up into an Osho Carriage battery or Medusa, I'd just go an Osho because D6 plus three shots is always going to be superior. And I think uh, my battle brother, Adam, uh, put me onto a good quote, which is, uh, there is a quality in quantity. Um, you know, granted, you could have one really good shot, which is super deadly, 10 through three, or do you want, let's say, you know, minimum of four shots, which are eight to two. You know, so do you want more shots more often or less shots, which are better? Um, so, you know, yeah, I, I, I don't know. If you had 110 points, I would probably spend it on something else than the Medusa. Um, okay, next is then the Praetor. Now, if you don't know what this thing is, um, I haven't really seen one on the flesh before. 
is this monstrosity. So the Praetor Armored Assault Launcher. 150 pounds is a block of resin. It's an expert kit, according to GW, and I've ordered one from China at half the price. Um, so it looks rad. It does look actually awesome. Uh, looks like something out of, unfortunately, the Ukraine war. I did a fire against which side. Obviously the tragedy of war there. Um, but it's a massive block of resin. It looks badass. Um, and it's very expensive. So unless you're buying for a forge reward, like I'm a fan of now, um, it's very expensive. So 275 points. Uh, for comparison, a Rogal Dawn is 260 points, I believe. Uh, it's got the Rogal Dawn key, key profile here. Move 10, 11 toughness, super tanky, 2 plus save, super tanky, 18 wounds, monstrosity, and an OC 5. Um, now, this big boy has got two weapon profiles, which definitely makes it something to consider. 120 inches, shoots wherever it wants, either 2d6 or d6 plus 1. Hitting on fours, which means you get down to hitting on twos via the order to increase your bits of skill and the heavy keyword. Of course, you're firing indirect. You're going to ignore that. We'll get into that in a second. Um, it's either strength six or four, AP one or two, and damage two or three. Now, they, they, in, retro, they in isolation look a bit weird, uh, four, two, three, but where this gets quite spicy is um, this one, which is basically meant to be like a firestorm, I think it is. Uh, some like napalm rockets, maybe. Ignores cover, which means your AP1 is always AP1. Nice. And then this one, it's AP2 at three damage, but it's anti-monster and vehicle four plus. So we've suddenly got a unit here which can uh, look after itself into both types of targets. And what I mean by that is obviously you could go after the 2D6, you could find to, I don't know, 20 pox walkers or 20 accursed cultists car space not going to see them much anymore because they've been nerfed and maximize the blast keyword because obviously it's 2d6 uh, you're going to get what on average seven if you're optimistic plus one two three for blast ignores cover super spicy against all infantry wounding on fours if not threes or twos against toughness three uh units obviously like astro militant guard or even most of the uh, aldari uh skinny people um, ignores covers great, but if you need to put your artillery into uh, vehicles, wounding on fours is decent, yeah? And that means even against T11 uh, units or T12 units, which um, definitely is out there from a, um, a primar Chaos Space Marine or Chaos Primaris uh, pr uh, Primark big dudes, I'm going to explain it quite poorly, oh, the vehicles wounding on fours is not to be scoffed at. Um, because you've got AP2, flat 3 damage, granted AP2 of course is AP1, but you boost it with the Fields of Fire Shadow and AP3, and it's definitely, you know, definitely to be considered. Now, the thing that, again, this is just where you're like, what is GW doing? Why are they making it like this for us? Is that if it receives an order, you ignore the penalty to hit. So, oh, I mean... Yeah, so, okay, we've got a unit here. They're trying to cut indirect out of the game, and still there's a unit in the guard index, which is you want to basically play indirect because, yeah, if it gets an order, and the key thing is it is squadron, it's a squadron unit, which means tank commands can give it orders, also Lord Solar can give it orders. You're going to be hitting on twos without the assistance of a scout sentinel. So you can basically, you know, it doesn't matter where your opponent goes, you're going to be annoying the hell out of them. Yeah, so you're going to just be, yeah, and this... Again, it's frustrating, but it is expensive. Uh, it's 275. It's basically, it's, it's two basilisks. Um, but as tanky as it is in the late game, this thing could go around and actually bully people. Um, and worst case, if you've got a relatively sparse terrain deployment zone, it could stick its ass out. It could be out in the open. And it's going to take a bit, a lot more DACA than a squishy ishy basilisk. Yeah. T9 versus 11 is a bit of a break point. Um, two plus save obviously is huge and again uh, given the way the cover game works in um, 10th edition this means you're typically always getting you're always on a two plus um, of course if they've got high AP it makes a difference and 18 wounds is serious business and also obviously also is OC5 um, now the other thing um, again it's just like you know it's the same commentary for a basilisk versus an earthshade carriage battery um, given it's a vehicle, it can contribute in the late game. It's got two bolters and a storm bolter, TV bolter, so it can actually put down a good bit of DACA and, you know, also it can tank shock being a vehicle. Um, so I, I'm actually quite positive towards this one. 
Um, the only thing I don't know how big it is, I've meant to get my order from China and see how physically large the model is. But I, I think in a universe where, you know, the, the manticore used to be just the, you just remove the, this from the decision-making process because the manticore was so strong, but given it's been cut so hard, you know, you can get one Praetor for less than two manticores. Is this suddenly a green? And again, commentary is always important from you, the audience. I'm only one person. Um, I hope it is because I've bought one from China. So I'm going to put it as green for now. And let me know what you think. Because I think, you know, it, again, it can basically be hitting on twos uh, if given an order. Uh, and th these profiles aren't to be scoffed at. Like this is going to probably, you know, you know, over the course of two turns, being optimistic, um, you know, eat away, you know, remove a five-man space marine squad, you know, punch a, punch a, punch a pretty decent hole in a, a blob of, you know, 10 or 20 models. Um, and if you have to in the late game, it can, it can tickle all vehicles, yeah? It can definitely tickle all vehicles. So I'm going to put it as a green. Uh, of course, this is dependent upon whether you can afford to pay this much money from Forge World official, or you can pay half the money, if not less, from Forge Reworld, wherever your friendly um, uh, recaster is based. So last but not least, and this will be quick, is the Wyvern or Wyvern, whatever you want to call it. 110 points for a plastic model, same core profile as uh, the Basilisk. Um, and basically, the way to think about this, it's two mortar tubes strapped together. Uh, as simple as that. It's 2d6 shots hitting on fours at five, zero, one. So in ninth edition, it was 4d6. And you're like, woof, that's like a lot of DACA. But given the way Twin Links now works is um, uh, you have got, it's got actually four, it's called a quad launcher. It's got four tubes, but you basically only fire two, but it's Twin Link. Now, what that what that obviously means and what's, what I don't get here is it ignores cover, but it's AP zero. But that means if you use fields of fire stratagem um, or use the external Lehman Rust to apply AP on, onto the target, your AP is sticking. So that's good, but it requires synergy. And twin link means you're ruling all wound rolls. So that means, you know, even against uh, toughness six infantry, like again, my favorite example, primary space marines, you're going to be doing more wounds than you think. Um, but... Oh, the other good thing is uh, it pins to infantry targets. So what that means is I think it has to make a hit onto an infantry target and then minus one to hit on both their weapon score, but this is gone until the next, then your next turn, I think it is. So that can be very good. Again, it can basically turn off your opponent's effectiveness as per the suppression fire stratagem. Now, uh, you know, it's vehicle, it's squadron, it's artillery, yippee. It's, it's a vehicle that can tank shot, it can contribute. It's getting into a flamer or a heavy bolt at hunting a missile. It all, it all stacks up. But um, yeah, my commentary here is the profile's terrible. It fundamentally is. If, you, if you're thinking about taking someone to you know, basically eat into um, infantry targets, just take heavy weapon squad because you get 3d6 with the same profile. And 3d6 versus 2d6... Um, twin links, you're probably getting as many wounds onto the target. Okay, it's a vehicle, uh, but it's a squishy vehicle, and um, definitely something we get bullied as guard players is um, bring it down. Your opponent could take the fixed secondary objective of bring it down, plus cleanse or deploy homers, and they're just going to get 20 potentially on that secondary score. So, again, if you want to take, if you want to get lots of shots, just take basically two heavy weapon squads. That's going to be 6D6 six six shots for almost the same cost as a Wyvern with 2D6. So this, unfortunately, is a firm red for me. So, if, if hopefully you agree. Okay, so I think I have to you know, start on how long I've been talking. I've been talking now for 40-ish um, 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 minutes. So I stated, started this video to basically explore, to be pragmatic, but ask me a long time, guard. So... Being pragmatic, Ash Militarm Guard Artillery is still good because we can basically be hitting on twos via the wrecked unit synergies, uh, correct unit synergies being the Scout Sentinel. So that we can't, I can't forget that because hitting on twos is mega and you're all ones. So like, still, there's so many synergies in that. You can get your Basilisk or the Manticore if you want to play it. Hitting on twos, that means you're more, more accurate than a Rogal Dawn can ever get to a, a Battle Cannon, Lehman Russ, a Tank Commander with an order from Lord Solar. Okay, take out all the infantry options like Kazrakurn or Scions or Gaunt's Ghosts who can hit on twos. 
But vehicles hitting on three on twos, reroll ones, is so strong. So you know, and I don't know if other armies can get there. I was going to look at other army indirect weapon profiles, but I don't know enough about them. But I don't think any army can get to them. And if they can, tell me. So are any other armies able to hit on twos with indirect fire? Um, I don't think you can. Um, now, the, the one thing about indirect, and I should have started this at the beginning of the video, since it's the video, is that indirect fire just removes your opponent's units. So you're denying resources. Um, a key thing, as I'm learning more in this game, it's taken me years to get there, is that you still need units to contribute in the late game. Because again, if your game is falling apart, you've lost all your chaff, all the infantry's dead, astromilitarian vehicles can roll around, hold objectives, and get into the fight. But things like Ursho carriage batteries, uh, Medusa carriage batteries, field ordnance batteries, can't do that. I mean, they move four inches, which is terrible. Um, so, yeah, I'm trying to stay on my key point, which is our indirect, I'd argue, is still good, is it as good as it used to be? No, obviously we've been, you know, the nerf has come in from a points point of view. A lot of these units are fundamentally more expensive than we started the 10th edition of 40K. Um, now the units that definitely can, will have, have leg room is the Basilisk, I think is a very safe option. The heavy weapon squad, I believe in the, in the right matchup will be effective. The Basilisk for me is always gonna be there. Minus two to move against infantry units is so strong. That is so strong to the opponent's game plan. Now the Praetor launcher is an outside pick. Um, I think it's probably it's probably you know it's more expensive, but points per wound it's very very tough. Is it superior to a Manticore um, point for point? I would probably say yes. Is it superior to Wyvern? Absolutely. Um, is it superior to a Medusa carriage battery? I would say yes. Again, I mean this is just, this is a thing I go back to is if it is an or if it is ordered, it can hit on twos. That's just that's mega. Um, and, you know, 275 is a lot, but if you want a unit which is going to sit on your home objective and guard it all game, doesn't matter if someone deep strikes in, I don't know, uh, my, my, my current stuff I'm dealing with from my friend Adam is Inceptors with Plasmas. Um, they're just not going to wound this thing. You're going to be, you know, you've got, the, you've got the save, you've got the wounds to get through it. Do you want someone to hold the back objective and potentially be a battering ram late in the game? This is the model. So, yeah. Yeah, hopefully it was... In interesting, insightful. I know I've done videos like this before, but it's been a lot of reflection for me to sort of get there. So let me know what you think. If I've gotten a thing wrong, always tell me because I'm only one person, one brain. Um, and your opinion is important to me because I'm by no means the best guy player. I play a lot. I play competitively, but I'm still going through the process of becoming an effectively, an effective general for Ashton Miller time, you know what I mean? So let me know what you think of this. Uh, give me your comments. Uh, let me know what you think. And um, uh, if you enjoyed it and want to support the video and support my channel, you can do so with a like, comment, or by subscribing, or simply watching any of my other YouTube videos. I'm a bit of a variety channel for Ashton Miller Time. I cover everything from the hobby aspect, from painting, kit bashing, and assembling, sometimes doing lore videos, to which recently a lot of like realism videos, how realistic is Luminous Battle Tank, the Chimera, or the Bane Blade was also one I did recently, and also the tactical aspect. And I take probably more and more of a statistical numbers uh, approach to it. Um, than some other channels out there. Um, you can become a channel member or simply becoming, uh, also joining my Patreon platoon. Do make sure to check out Morden Glory and Caddy and Cart um, Sergeant Steel for a different perspective on this, as I've always got different ways of thinking. Um, and massive, massive thanks to my current supporters. So get your bayonet sharp, last gun oiled, faith from the Emperor Strong, Patreon platoon, sound off. Tank Commander Glenn. Tank Commander Watchdog Van Etten. Tank Commander Mitchell, Lieutenant Burke Nielsen, Colour Sergeant DuPont, Sergeant Adal, the Colonel Merrill, Chosen Man Smith, Veteran Gibson, Hall, Lundeen, Guardsman Beard, Coquelin, Flint, Hills, Malik, Nitin, Nguyen, Tom, Tompkin, Conscript de Paz, England, Evan Gunn, Gillian, Goodwin, King.